Tay Lu has released another trailer providing some more appetizing details on what is ahead. Well, the trailer itself is pretty strong. Now, I am not a big fan of the video game. I've heard very good things. I haven't had time to get to it. I'm more of an old school person, like Super Mario, Final Fantasy 7 and 8. It's shocking that Final Fantasy 8 now is a classical game, but there we are. Still, this did provide quite a lot of backstory, and you could kind of guess that this is kind of a post-apocalyptic setting. So I won't be spoiling too much, but I think we can conjecture a few things just based on the trailer. So Ellie is some kind of vehicle for the cure. Presumably there's, I guess, a virus or some kind of cataclysm. Destroyed civilization. And they did give hints it's a zombie issue because we see some kind of zombie creatures at the end. So presumably a large amount of the population has been infected. And I guess some of the infection has mutated to the point of zombie creatures. And Joel, played by Pedro Pascal, is going to be tasked with taking Ellie to the right people, I guess on the West Coast. And their journey is going to be the usual harrowing existential battle with other outlaws, misfits, fighting their own fears and whatnot. Now, I think the characters themselves, as being portrayed through the actors, it's really picture perfect because, again, you can quibble about a few details, but Pedro Pascal really does seem to me, physically to me, what Joel should look like. Like this older, tougher character. He's not technically Ellie's father, but they're going to grow to have this kind of paternal relationship as they go along. And they didn't show too much, so we're getting that there's going to be a lot of chaos. Obviously, there's going to be a few twists to separate it from the video game. But Neil has promised that they are going to keep to a lot of the video game, but there are going to be a few more things they're going to add that were not included in the video games. So, so far, so good. It looks pretty amazing. Probably the one quibble I did have, though, was the music choice. Now, again, I want to emphasize I've not played the video games. So, from what I understand, the music being used makes sense with the video game. So, there's a lot of callbacks I did not recognize because I haven't played the video games. I just think the music here didn't make a whole lot of sense. The music for the other trailer, I thought, was more appropriate. So probably some aspects of this adaptation I'm not going to be fully engaged in because I want to come in pretty fresh to not be spoiled on the whole thing because now the discussion has gone to the point where I was spoiled on one major plot point that's going to happen early on. It's not too much. I mean, we recognize it's a post-apocalyptic setting, so some people are going to die, but I would have preferred to be kept a complete mystery. So I'm spoiled on one character dying fairly early on. So eh, there we are. But apparently there will be quite a body count, which fits because these are two Game of Thrones actors. So I'm fully prepared that there's going to be characters we're going to be attached to, and then they're going to be brutally taken out of the picture for perhaps no reason at all, just to show us that this is a very, very tenuous existence. I did notice one problem, though, in terms of like the scene with Ellie and Joel did to me seem a little bit too similar to what happened with X-Men with Wolverine and Rogue. And that would fit the timeline when they made the video game. I don't know if Neil is doing an homage or he got lazy and stole it. That part felt a little funny. It felt a little too close to what happened with the X-Men film. But maybe I'm just seeing things. But that dynamic between Ellie and Joel it sort of mirrors what happens with Wolverine and Rogue. And that did not happen in the comics, because Wolverine and Rogue do have a relationship, but it's very, very different from what we see with the animated series or even with the films. So, that's interesting. So, overall, I'm giving this trailer very, very high marks. I'm going to give it a 8.75. I think it mostly got the job done. We're getting some critical new details about the world building, about how vast this world is and how big the journey will be and how deadly it is. Because, obviously, we see a lot of liberal use of firearms and just People are clearly armed all the time with knives and weapons. But there's also a bit of nice gallows humor where Ellie pretends to be a zombie. And she's becoming zombified. That was pretty cute. So overall, very reassuring signs this will be very strong. However, there's no doubt this will have a very dark, serious tone. And Andor recently has been struggling in the ratings because it is also so very serious and dark. Of course, there are jokes and humor, but overall the tone is very, very serious. And I agree with the consensus that Andor is really, really good and, should, and you should really give it a try. But I am worried it's going to be struggling with the ratings now as well as Last of Us because it is so serious. And for whatever reason, 
I guess people are in the mood for more silly stuff for a while, but I prefer it going back and forth between very silly and dark situations. So it's a very big thumbs up for the trailer, and it seems that the reactions from the fans are mostly positive. So all very reassuring signs, but I do see some trouble ahead for The Last of Us, but I'm very eager to see the full package in January.